Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven women in business learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident. Feel empowered and challenged through inspiring stories and tell it like it is advice for business, life, and leadership. Hey, Bombshell. Welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle, and I'm always ever grateful that you've chosen to spend your limited professional development time with me and my guests on the podcast. No major announcements today other than happy Halloween. I hope that you have a safe and fun evening with the kiddos or at your own costume party. And of course, we want you to download that app. The Bombshell Business app is out there. It's waiting for you to dive in and get access to the podcast and all the show notes and everything just right there at your fingertips. Worksheets, the whole nine yards, everything is in there so that you, a busy bombshell, can learn on the go. And of course, we would love for you to give it a rating and review. Um, we know how important that is for the podcast so that people know that they can listen and it's worthy of their time. And apparently, it's even more critical for apps to be successful. So I would cherish a rating re and review if you would be so kind to take a few minutes to just go back into the app store. Um, I think you have to give it a title and then uh, your your review and then, you know, click the stars or whatever in order to be able to submit it. I know I've had some people tell me like, I can't submit it. And then they put in the title and, and it worked. So, you know, there's always technical things that's available on the app store. If you're an iPhone or iPad user. And then of course, in the Google play store, if you're an Android user. So all of that will be in the show notes today, which if you have the app, you'd be able to access uh, right there at your fingertips. Not a lot to talk about today other than those few things, but what we do need to talk about is getting back in the driver's seat with easy meal planning. We are just about to the holidays. It's going to be crazy train, and if there is ever a time to stay in control of your nutrition or even just your budget, it, it's now. So we're talking about these things so you could kind of get ahead of things before the holiday season erupts. And of course, we're going to do that with bombshell business expert, Kirby Miller. She is our lifestyle expert. You see her on YouTube. She is the bomb. We've been posting lately um, at the time of this recording, some of her television appearances. Kirby's heart is in the kitchen. Cooking and baking have been monumental parts of her life since childhood. Her best memories are in the kitchen and she believes great food is an on opportunity to authentically connect, developing new recipes and orchestrating flavor profiles with delicious ingredients is her way to channel passion and creativity into every bite. Food should be flavorful, creative, beautiful, and most importantly, should leave an impact. There are a few things better than the seconds of contemplative silence that follow the first bite of delicious food that never gets old. She's been cooking since she was five and has not stopped since. She's launched an online cooking show to share her inner foodie via her brand, Kanimi Kitchen. Kirby, girl, welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be back on the show. And this is a topic that I love, kind of getting back in the driver's seat because it's so easy to feel like you're just a passenger at this time of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or getting drugged yeah. behind like on the trailer hitch. <laughs> yes. yes, I love the visual of Crazy Train. When you said that, I was like, yep, that's exactly what this time of the year brings. We're kind of mourning the transition from summer. It's getting dark earlier. And then we're like, whoa, I have to plan for the holidays. And there are school activities and football games and all the things. So it's really easy to spiral out of control. Yeah. <laughs> every time of the year. Yeah. And, you know, meal prepping, I can't say that I'm great about it all the time. And, and I joke with my kids, or at least the, the one child that still actually lives in the house. If I've been out speaking a lot or traveling at, and I haven't had the opportunity to do all of this. Um, I like by Wednesday, I'm like, I promise I'm going to be a good mom again next week <laughs> <laughs> because right. they're used right. next to, week, you know, we're going to talk it up this week. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, like just look at him go, just one more day of school lunch. I promise. And he's got amazing right. school lunch. He goes to a private school and they like roll out the red carpet, but he's just used to what mom, you know, my, 
yeah. nutritious meal. So anyways, tell us a little bit about the strategy here. What's what's yeah. where do we even begin? Yeah. So it always feels really good to stay on your budget and then also eat good food. But that's a combination that's kind of tough to come by. And honestly, we have a lot of things to do in our life and we all are the B word busy. Mm -hmm. And so the way I like to look at this, because some people, they are not like me. They don't find cooking to be a stress reliever. And sometimes when my schedule is hectic, it's, it gets to be stressful too. So the way that I like to look at it is Imagine what you could do with the minutes that you're saving, not wondering, hey, what's for lunch or what's for dinner or eating something that you then feel really guilty about. (laughs) So it's like this actually you put a little time in on the front end and it will actually help you out. And it's just a challenge. Like we talked about balancing, you know, prepping food and work and friends and it can what I like to say, feel like you're trying to take a sip, like a little baby sip out of a fire hose. Like life comes at you fast sometimes. And before you know it, you're just out of control. So a couple of simple tools and tips and tricks. I just like to say, plan it. And when you talk about planning meals, that immediately has this connotation of stress, but it doesn't have to be stressful. You can keep it extremely simple and just think, okay, What do I like to eat? What are my family favorites? And then look for opportunities for healthier options or more efficient options. Maybe you guys like really healthy food, but it takes you a long time. How can you make that more efficient? Um, So a couple of things are just the brainstorming part. If you guys like spaghetti and garlic toast, you know, try incorporating some healthier options like zoodles that can be made ahead of time. Mm, Yeah. then um, subbing in like some garlic flatbread. And that's something that you can have on hand. I love a good flatbread situation because you can, it's like a blank canvas. Mm -hmm. Do I want to make it like a rolled up sandwich? Do I want to use it as a side? So really the first step is just, what do we like? What would I eat? Because there's nothing really productive about spending time and money grocery shopping on what you feel like you should eat and then throwing it away at the end of the week. <laughs> because yes. you so you got to th- start with what, what do we like? Just brainstorm that. And then also, for example, if your family is like, hey, we like Italian food, make a large batch of sauce ahead of time. This, again, doesn't have to be stressful. You can start with a good jar sauce, add in some garlic and some fresh herbs, and then you can use that to make spaghetti, lasagna, baked ziti by separating it into different containers and labeling it. So if you're thinking about that and you know your family likes it, you know that they'll eat it, you've now taken care of one meal for at least three weeks. So if you made a big batch and then you separate it into three smaller batches, you've just taken the guesswork out. And you've also won some lunches over too, because you can do smaller portions for lunch too. So that would be the first step is just get in on the planning part of it. And if you're at a loss, ask, ask the family, Hey, what would you eat? Yeah. (laughs) I don't know how that would go over in your family. Yeah. (laughs) Well, yeah, there'd be, well, lots of different uh, opinions, but the one thing that I did years ago was I started a family cookbook and it's nothing fancy. It is just a three ring binder that of course is pretty because it has to be because I'm me, but I put clear page protectors in it and then I would print a recipe off the internet. I would use it. If everybody loved it, then uh-huh. I would go in that. And if, if Ooh. everybody didn't really love it, then I threw it out. And so yeah. I have my go-to recipes for entertaining. I know what my family is going to like. And most of those things I can make on my own. But my kids love like this um, Thai turkey cabbage salad thing. And it's Sounds delicious. <laughs> it's amazing. And there's lots of steps to it. So there's no way I can remember. But it's always right there sitting there. So, you know, if I, it's, it's just a go-to, but that's for me. And I've, of course, this is like you and I talking about our closets, but <laughs> in it, there's also like, it's, it's, I've got dividers and it's like appetizers, poultry, beef, sides, uh, salads, desserts, and even cocktails. And yes. so I just flip to it. And if I know that we need to be eating some chicken because we ate meat or whatever, then I can map out my menu by just going to my own recipe book that we've created. 
Yep. I love that. And that's the, that's getting the buy-in before you go to the grocery store, because again, you don't want to spend the money and the time and people don't want it. And some of you might be listening and say, oh, well, goodness, I couldn't do that. I'd either get a shoulder shrug or they're going to ask for everything, you know, that I don't want to make. So even to your point, kind of categorizing things, if you've got protein sides, pastas, desserts, um, snacks, if you have your different categories and kind of say, okay, this week you pick out what pasta or this week you pick out the snacks just to kind of get that buy in, but help to rein them in a little bit. And then that also helps on your prep side of things. If you are like, goodness, I have to cook all of these things by myself because no one helps me kind of think about that. You can, if it's, for example, you could be like, Hey, little Mikey, remember those banana nut muffins that you wanted? It's time to help smash the bananas. Like, right. you help pick it out. Let's get you in the kitchen. And also, I found that helps create some really cool memories as well while you're being efficient with your time. So that's another technique. Yes. And of course, we've been a little slack on it um, lately. Again, just travel. And Derek is a sophomore and has chemistry and geometry. Oh, so <laughs> lots and lots of homework. But we traditionally have done foodie family fun night on Monday nights. And that's when oh my, my teenage son comes and helps me and I show him how to do things. So he knows how to measure. He knows how to chop. He knows the difference between like chopping finely or coarsely dicing. Yeah. I mean, he's he has all he knows how to make certain things and why you can overcook eggs. And, yeah. and so it's I mean, it's not just a time for us to connect as mother and son. It's, it's a time for me to teach him life skills. Life and skill. yes, I'm always like, your wife better thank me. Absolutely. And I think we sometimes go right past that. We're used to convenience and quick and then, oh my goodness, if I get the kids involved, that's going to take more time, but it's actually a cool way to incorporate the bonding time, but then life skills, because you would not believe how many folks in my demographic have absolutely no idea how to do the basics in cooking. And that's, you know, that's not a negative thing. That's opportunity between YouTube, Pinterest, and all the things you can figure out what to do. But it's kind of shocking to me that they haven't had that experience. So getting getting your family involved has multi-layer benefits. And in addition to that, with your planning, you have to make sure you have the right tools. Oh, yeah. Oh my goodness. And again, it doesn't have to be overly complicated, but if we're talking prep, you want to make sure that you have the right storage containers. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I have definitely in the past had those moments where you open the cabinet <laughs> where you keep your storage containers and then like the lids come down and hit you, <laughs> but none of them are the one that you need. Yes. Um, that kind of goes into kind of what we talked about with our, our closets purging, get rid of it. It might be sentimental because Aunt Judy gave it to you, but Aunt Judy's not there when you want to say terrible things while you're meal prepping. So <laughs> if you can't find the tops and bottoms, like maybe it's time to clean house and get storage containers. They have some really cool ones now that nestle together so that you don't lose the tops. It's pretty great. And again, just trying to gain efficiency when you're prepping so you can make a batch and parse it out some of it goes in the refrigerator some in the freezer and it just helps things run a little bit more smoothly yeah and even you know you don't try to screw a screw with a hammer and so having basic tools in the kitchen that you might need like a peeler instead of a paring knife and yes. um, even just like a little those, one of those little $15 mini food processors that you could get like at Target or something. It's yes. still going to knock a ton of time off if you know I'm going to be chopping onions. Okay, well, you yep. can sit there and cry and hopefully have <laughs> right. a good knife or, you know, but if you don't, then just throw it in one of those things and be done. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> right. And then while you're doing it, you know, sometimes you have that half an onion that you don't want to throw away, but then you end up throwing away two weeks anyway. Yeah. Go ahead and put that in the food processor and put that in a little container, label it, put it in the freezer. So if you need to, when you're meal prepping next time, you've cut out a step. So there's definitely ways to gain efficiency with like little tools like that. Uh, I absolutely love my food processor is again, to your point, do I want to stand here and chop or do, would I rather just toss it in and get more bang for my buck on time? I vote for that one. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then just, like I said, have having the right tools with various size containers. And one thing that I really love are the um, bento boxes. 
Because I know like if you go out to like a hibachi restaurant or something like that, you can get those, but you can actually buy reusable or even sometimes, hey, you can get disposable bento boxes that help with lunches. So you can separate things and have your lunches prepped ahead of time. So that's another kind of resource when you're planning, what food do I need? But then also what tools and containers do I need to help it run more smoothly? And then it doesn't get all soggy and the flavors aren't touching each other. Yeah. And then your kids aren't like, oh, I didn't eat it because my <laughs> grapes tasted like my <laughs> mustard. <laughs> exactly. So I threw it away and bought school lunch. You're like, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> With the planning to just like anything else, you have to set aside time to do it because if you have a time carved out, obviously it's more likely that you'll do it because we can all go through weeks and weeks and weeks with the best intentions, but you look at your to-do list and you haven't crossed anything off. So setting aside like 45 minutes to plan a two week period. That's definitely worth the return on that time. And the more you do it, the more efficient that you'll become. And I'm a huge uh, fan of using the timer on my phone to say, okay, because I, you know, if you see something shiny, you want to go off and (laughs) have that conversation or follow up on this. I need that dedicated set of timer. This is what I'm doing during this time. And it definitely pays off. Yeah. And then there are, and it doesn't that work. Like it might sound really basic, like, oh, set a timer. But really, if you're just like, okay. This 45 minutes, this is what it's dedicated for. It really does help. Totally and, happy to treat myself like a four-year-old who has to yeah, clean their exactly. room all day long. Because exactly. you know what? I get it done. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And then we often look up sometimes at the end of the day and we're like, oh my gosh, where did the day go? I don't know what I got accomplished. And I think that sometimes because we're jumping from thing to thing. So when you set a 45 minute timer and if it goes off and you're only 25% done with what you're trying to do, you kind of realize, okay, I got to make some adjustments here. So it really helps with um, just giving some insight on how your time is spent. That's definitely helped me too. Yeah. And then if you're like, wow, I'm not at the champion level for meal planning. This sounds great, but I'm going to need a little bit more help. There are so many different apps that are designed to help aid with meal planning and reducing waste. You can look in your pantry or refrigerator and just put in the ingredients that you have and the app will suggest different recipes. So there are different ways to make this a little bit more efficient and not stressful and overwhelming. And one thing that I see some people do too, which my family would never be able to do this because we're like you, we love food. I think cooking is relaxing. I think cleaning, anybody's like, Oh, I love vacuuming. I think they're crazy. (laughs) Um, But I also understand why they think I'm crazy because I love to cook. Yes. But I do see some people successfully say like, okay, Monday night is Italian night. So maybe one, one Monday they might do lasagna. One, one Monday they might do baked ziti or they might do, you know, just your basic spaghetti. And then Tuesday nights, taco Tuesday. And then they either double up on the ground turkey or double up on the ground beef and they season some of it to be Italian and some of it to be you know, Mexican. And then Wednesday might, night might be like, we eat out because we're going to Wednesday night church or, you know, yeah. soccer practice or whatever. And then Thursday night is sandwich and soup. And then Friday night is pizza night. Like, yeah. they've, in, yeah. and some of that is building in eating out, but at least realistically, they know what they're going to be cooking at home and how to prepare for that in advance and just yeah. naming each night. And it takes the the guesswork out of it. And that's a huge part of this is just remove the guesswork because you know you're going to get hungry. It's kind of like if you're rushing to, and I'm guilty of this sometimes, but every year your significant other or somebody you love, their birthday is on the same day. Are you always rushing to get a gift? Like, you know, when their birthday is, it's kind Mm -hmm. of the same thing. It's like, you know, you're going to get hungry. You know, your kids are going to get hungry. (laughs) Yet, why are, why are we still like guessing and on the spirals? It's like remove, remove the guesswork out of it. And a huge part of that is planning, but then you have to go buy it. So I like to say pick one day to have, you know, a power hour or for some of us power hours Mm -hmm. for shopping and prep and utilize what you have in the community. So for me, I love going to the farmer's market. My sister uses a grocery delivery service because that's convenient for her. But just pick a day that you're like, okay, either I'm going to buy the groceries or the groceries are getting here and then I'm going to move into Uh, my prep stage. So for me, I have a little 
packet of reusable bags in the back of my car. And I have, um, if you all who are listening, if you've ever been to Aldi, you know, you have to use a quarter. So I have my Aldi quarter ready. Like it goes to the same place in my car. (laughs) So I can, now I can get my cart, grab my bags and get the job done. And again, that helps it not be as stressful. Like, Oh my goodness, I have to stop by the store again tonight, try to get it done in one day and then knock out the prep. Love it. Yes, the buying it part can be a little stressful. But again, if you go in with a plan, you can kind of execute and not be all over the store picking up things that you'll never actually use in a recipe. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You know, and one way that we help remember to get things is we have we have Alexa or an Echo, you know, so if my Alexa's lighting up right now, like, what do you want to do? Yeah. (laughs) My grocery list lives on Wonderlist, which is an app. And, um, and I have an if this, then that recipe set up. So I'm super geeking here. You, you can just use it. the one that's actually in Alexa, but because mm-hmm. I already use Wonderlist for groceries and I can share that list with, you know, my family or whatever, you can walk right by it through the kitchen and be like, you know, get ground mustard. Or yep. whatever that you just used the last of, now it goes to an app which populates my shopping list. And yeah. when it's time to make my list, I already have everything that we need. And then I just add to it from there, which totally saves like those two trips after your grocery trip to go back to the things that you forgot <laughs> or that your kids didn't tell you you needed. Right, right. And you save time. So that you're not Googling, what can I replace? <laughs> what can I use in the place of ground mustard? Nothing. You need the ground mustard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that that is a really great tip is using the the technology on hand in the moment so that you don't miss it. Um, and then when you're prepping, get kind of creative with that too. And I know this may sound non-traditional, but if you think about it, this kind of struggle is not just yours. You, know, you might have a friend, a sister, a cousin who is also interested in healthy meals, also needs some time back in their life, consider a buddy system. So you can actually say, hey, come over. We'll turn on some tunes. If you enjoy chopping, this is what we're chopping. And this, I'll cook it or vice versa. Or maybe they just support through the cooking process and we'll do the dishes. And then you divvy up the meals. That's something that I have had some friends do. They have like a freezer meal party. Yes. And that is kind of neat. So again, a way to connect with people, spend your time wisely, and then you get more time on the back end. So it really is amazing um, the wonders that that kind of system can produce. Like it's something that you may not think of cooking with your best friend for like, we're going to make meals for the next two weeks. But it's a cool way, again, to make the most of your time. And for me, I just think, like I said, you can get some really cool connections over food. And you can laugh at yourselves. It's pretty fun. <laughs> and try new things, too, because somebody yeah. else might, they might have, you know, a different flavor profile than you or, um, I mean, they might, what, what was it that my daughter pulled out of my spice cabinet last night? It was like, it was, I think it was like Hong, which is an Indian yeah. spice. Hey. And she just looked at me and she was like, what do you use this for? And I'm like, <laughs> Indian food. She's like, right. you're so weird. I'm like, I'm not weird. <laughs> you go eat Indian food all the time. You all don't the tell time. them that they're exactly. weird for having that. Exactly. Yeah. So you might have all that to say. Somebody might have a, a Southern way of cooking. Somebody else might have mm-hmm. more of a worldly style. And yep. that's a really cool way. Not to mention, it's like exercise, right? Which I also love. But I know that people who don't love exercising usually buddy up or they work out with a group of friends because right. then it becomes a social thing. And right. then you get the whole workout thing done while you're socializing with your friends. What a great way to do that in the kitchen. Yeah, it's like two birds, one stone. And even if you want to take it a step further with the purchasing part of it if somebody has a costco or sam's membership you can definitely make the most of that type of relationship because personally i don't know that i'm always going to cook you know five pounds of green beans but if you have a few friends and you're splitting it up that might make a make more sense and when we're talking about ingredients it's like looking at them through a new lens and you alluded to this before so for example if you're at a store, there's a great sale on chicken 
again, throw on some jams, get three different pans. And like one can be your Italian pan. One can be your fajita seasoning and a little liquid smoke. That's a gem there. I don't know if you like your liquid smoke, but I love spray. Amazing. And then you can do another one with some rotisserie spices and bake them all. And then now you've got three little magical pans that are great protein mix-ins for pastas, fajita, fajitas, salads, sandwiches, and you've knocked that out all at one time. So it really is the divide and conquer kind of approach to this, like get it all in there and then split it up so that you have resources for more than just one meal. Absolutely. Personal trainers and wellness coaches all over are wildly applauding you right now, Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> because if we take the guesswork out of it, you're more likely to stick to it. And if it's flavorful, you're more likely to stick to it. So that's why like with your three pans, get a little adventurous, put some fresh herbs in there, put some fresh garlic in there, play around with some flavored olive oils so that it doesn't, it's not just boring. Yeah. And that's going to help you stick with it as well. Totally. I'm, I'm very inspired. I might head to the grocery store after we uh, wrap this. <laughs> yeah, I'm making um, hoisin chicken with uh, clear rice noodles tonight for dinner oh. with some vegetables mm -hmm. and, and stuff. So I'm, I'm, I pulled everything out before we did this interview because we we're doing this interview but a little bit later than I normally do because uh, Kirby is highly in demand. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I pulled everything out and I was like, ooh, Kirby would. She'd be interested in this. <laughs> I, that sounds amazing. And now it's got my brain working on what I might do for dinner. There's a um, pumpkin, a Tuscan, Tuscany pumpkin sauce Ooh. that I really like. And I've made a lasagna out of that before. It's really good. So that might be, might be what I do while I'm doing a little laundry. I have to uh, Instagram it. feed. Absolutely. <laughs> about that. And that's the thing. Not everything has to be involved. It's like you can take some no-bake lasagna noodles a little pre-made sauce and add some spices to it and get the job done. So it's just, it doesn't have to be involved, but you do have to have some thought in it for it to run smoothly when you're actually in the moment trying to cook. Cause there's nothing more frustrating than, okay, I'm going to do this, but you don't have the right resources or ingredients and snacking. Some people don't snack. They eat their three meals. I don't understand those people, but they're out there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing, too, that you have to think about when you're meal prepping and grocery shopping is, okay, snacks. What's going to keep me going in between breakfast and lunch or that time at like 2.46 every day that you get really hungry? Like, what kind of snacks are you going to have available and have them ready to grab and go? So I like to say you might want to create a snack stack, like an area in the pantry that's dedicated to your granola bars, which you can make homemade as well. Your fruit snacks, you can put your crackers there in your pantry. Then in your refrigerator, designate a little snack area too. I don't have any kids, but I'm fully comfortable saying that I still love peanut butter and jelly like I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So you could have like half PB&Js already bagged up. So that can be an after school snack. Or if you're running late one morning, that would be a great breakfast as well. So you can just have your little pre-packaged snacks in a dedicated area in your fridge and pantry. And it's amazing what a time saver that can be. Yes, I do that with Derek's lunches because I... I like to have a fruit and a vegetable in there and then a protein snack. And then I make his sandwich fresh every day just because I don't personally love soppy bread yeah. and everything. But at, on Sundays and I'll have him help me. We'll bag up. Um, I'll either get like the little bags of the um, carrots or I'll bag up broccoli and we'll bag up strawberries or watermelon if it's in season whatever our farm stand has mm -hmm. our, our farmer friends out here in Lebanon Tennessee yes. um, and then we'll pack up like cashews or almonds or something or walnuts and then it's easy peasy and then we yep. keep like the cuties those little oranges oh, yes. or, they're not oranges mm -hmm. they're Clementines? Clementines, yes. And that's easy to peel. It's all contained. It's a serving yep. size. Yep. Um, and he can grab it when he gets home after soccer practice yep. and down one of those. Um, and then we keep all of the protein shake mix and PB2 peanut butter powder yep. and 
all that kind of stuff all together. So it's quick if he needs to make that. So we try to do those kind of like when I make his lunch in the morning, really, I'm just making the sandwich and I'm just throwing everything else in. Everything it was already else prepped. together. Yeah. And I think that is a good point. Getting your kids or even if it's yourself or a significant other involved in the process. Um, I think that's really great. So the bento boxes that I mentioned, that's a great way to get um, folks involved as well. And it's a good way to have the variety and the freshness and also a little bit of ownership. And what I mean by that, it's like, okay, here's your bento box and you pick one thing out of this pile, two things out of this pile, and you can build your own box. And that's kind of cool. And it gets kids involved as well. And it also is a great way to make sure that you're teaching them about balance. Yes. And honestly, as an adult, it's a great way <laughs> to make sure that it's balanced because sometimes it's easy just to eat two to three different types of carbs. But if you've got a bento box and you know, okay, well, this is my protein area or my veggies or, you know, have a little snack area. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, I have these shaved almonds and I just put a little bit of cinnamon on them which sounds extremely boring but it's actually really delicious and that goes in one little section and what I like about that it gives me the crunch it gives you a little bit of sweet and they're shaved and so it's not you get to eat more because sometimes we just want that feeling of putting something in your mouth mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's the little content a little section in my box is shaved almonds with the cinnamon so you can get really creative with those and it's a great way again to save time and and get other folks involved as well okay love so yeah. so far we're planning it we're buying it and we are prepping it and we're prepping it it's like three easy steps take the guesswork out and what i like to say the number one rule of this there are no rules yes. there are no rules <laughs> there are no rules you're gonna get hungry you gotta eat you should be thinking about nutrition a little bit but I think sometimes we can get overly stressed out about certain things and, I, and some people have great goals and there are certain slices of our life that require us to be a little bit more stringent but just overall you need food and you want it to be convenient so there really are no hard and fast rules you want to have fun exploring different options and combinations and recipes and through doing that you will find out what works find out ways to be more efficient find out what your family likes uh, and then you stick with it so that you can have more time to you know take over the world if that's your plan absolutely <laughs> and you know there's always little shortcuts and and cheats too i mean there are local places that make home cooked meals that you can order um you might check with your CrossFit gym to see if there's like a paleo meal service that's yeah. in their area. There's all of those meal planning services like Sun Basket or yeah. HelloFresh or any right. of those places. Mm -hmm. And we, we've done Sun Basket for a long, long time because, and we only get two meals a week from them. We don't, we don't go crazy with it because okay. I know in Lebanon, Tennessee, I'm not going to be able to get some of the ingredients <laughs> that they put in there. And we yes. have really wide palates and, mm -hmm. and it's fun and we get to play with new ingredients. And, you know, my mom's a chef, so I learned all kinds of stuff growing up. Mm -hmm. But what my friends have discovered through these type of things is it's not just about ha cooking a, a whole meal with whole food that's fresh and it's not, you know, sent to you like, you know, dead and already right. cooked and all is gross. Right. You know, it's all fresh and tastes amazing. But they also walk you through how to how to do different like techniques. And, yes. they, and you start to understand flavor profiles and how things right. integrate together to make like my son will say, oh, I would have never guessed if you put that, that, that and that together. It tastes like this. And so now he understands. And so that might be, you know, if it's economically um, feasible for you, that might be a great way to start so you can start yeah. understanding how food works together. I think that's a really great point. And then you will reduce your waste because they send you everything that you need, but in the right proportion. And so then you can say, okay, I really like this, but maybe I would tweak it a little bit. And then it gives you more confidence when you're going out and grocery shopping. 
So you might say, I really love that pasta dish, or they did this really funky pizza, and I'd want to do that again. So I think that's actually a really great point. If if you're listening to this, and you're like, yes, I'm really motivated, but oh, I'm really still kind of intimidated. That is a great middle ground, because again, it's fresh. You'll get exposure to seasonal items, and then you'll get to be creative, but kind of in a safe zone. And right. then you can go out yes. <laughs> and try it on your own. But I'm with you. I'm on team experiment, investigate. I will yes. throw out there that um, I have been very, very disappointed in lots of um, Pinterest recipes because you don't know these people's background. And some board housewife in yes. middle America is trying to teach you how to make like tamales. And I'm telling you, it's not. <laughs> It shouldn't the bless her heart, as we'd say in the South, like that is not your jam. You've probably never actually eaten a real tamale made right. in Mexico. So like let somebody else in Southern California or Texas teach that and then you right. stick to different recipes. So, um, you know, I would like, what are some of your favorites? I love um, like Food Network, Epicurious. Um, yes, I was going to say Epicurious. That's one of my favorites. Uh, as well. And then if you also, within your friend group, if you just kind of throw out there, hey, looking to try something new, what are three of your tried and true recipes? That's a great way. Um, So you can actually have people that you trust uh, that have vet out some recipes for you. And I would say one other thing when you're experimenting is your spice collection probably needs to be a bit more involved than just salt, pepper, and maybe some garlic salt. Let's get some, you know, minced onion, some garlic powder, some basil, get those cute little um, packets of fresh herbs and really just start experimenting. And you would be amazed how that just takes your food to the next level when you just add a little bit more seasoning that is not salt. Uh, Because a lot of people think, I did season it. It's got salt and pepper. It's like, ah, well, there's a little bit more to it. And again, when when you make it more flavorful, you're more apt to want to eat it and your family is too. So I would definitely say um, play around in the spice aisle in the herb section as well. Yes. And I'm heavy handed. So usually if a recipe (laughs) calls for a certain amount, like I almost always double it. We are big, big uh, seasoning type people and using fresh herbs. Um, And you can grow those in a pot on your kitchen counter. You can put them on your deck. I mean, you could do a container garden. Mm -hmm. Um, But that just freshness again, and adds a whole nother element that and just keeping like lemons and limes on hand. Things like that that will just elevate the whole punch of, exactly. of a dish. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Oh, girl, I could talk to you about this all the time. <laughs> I mean, I could too. And then it's just while we're even talking, I've got so many other ideas. I'm excited about some some future blog posts to write to kind of take it to the next level. And I can't wait to hear from you all who are listening. You know, what are your favorite make ahead meals or Maybe you're not a make-ahead person. Maybe you don't want to take something out of the freezer and put it in the oven. What What are your go-to fresh on-the-go meals? I can't wait to hear from folks who are listening too. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start a chat or you can beat me to it in the Bombshell Business app and we can just exchange ideas in there and maybe even link to recipes that we love, love, love um, and share it with each other. Things that are easy to make ahead and um, whether it's frozen or fresh or whatever and be there to support our Bombshell community and uh, let Kirby know that she is awesome. (laughs) I love it. Thank you so much. These are so, so fun. And then even talking through it, I just get new ideas for myself too so can't wait until the next time yeah absolutely so you heard it here on the bombshell business podcast be sure you connect with kirby i'm telling you you want to follow her youtube channel like it's it's a must and uh, make sure you follow her on instagram too i always love seeing what she posts she's very inspirational when it comes to the kitchen and of course helping us in all areas of lifestyle here as one of our bombshell business experts So be sure to reach out to her. Let us know what you think. And we will catch you on the next episode. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit AmberHurdle.com for more resources like show notes. And check out the BombshellBusinessWoman.com to grab my book and download the free bonuses.